Okay, we're rolling, by the way. Oh, nice. So it's already happening. Oh, wait. I'm so sorry I couldn't speak so sweet. I saw my mother this weekend. I'm not a person that, too. that tans very easily. I mean, I'm not a dark-skinned person. Okay, we all are aware of the fact that I'm Jewish and I'm fair-skinned. But when I go to the beach, like, I can get a little sun on me. So I was at the beach for a week. And then I saw my mother this weekend, and one of the first things she says to me is, where's your tan? Oh, God. And I was just like, really? Like, why does it occur to you to immediately... Criticize what you look like? Yeah, criticize. Yeah. And My mom would have done the opposite. She would have been like, why are you tan? Oh, right. Don't you know? Well, if she had noticed the tan or a sunburn, then she would have been like, did you use sunscreen? (laughs) Mom, I'm in my 30s, so... Whether I did or didn't, I know, I'm not going to discuss that with you. <laughs> These Ugh. conversations seem to go. I know. My mom and I had a whole, like, hour-long conversation on the definition of unsolicited advice. <laughs> and? She was like... What's the consensus? Well, she just... She forgets. She just will... She'll do it again the next day, so it was pointless. Oh, like she gave you some unsolicited advice. I, my My advice was if you have to preface something with... This is unsolicited advice, but uh, yeah. <laughs> then, like, maybe don't say that thing. Right. Or, like, I know you're not asking me, but. Yeah, but yeah. don't, so don't do it. Yeah, there are a lot of versions of that. And she was like, well, I'm just telling you how I feel, and you can choose to take it or not. And I was like, no, that's still a thing I can, a- that's, like, still in the advice portion of me asking you. Right. You know, like, yeah. bringing it up, and then you can tell me stuff, and then I can take it or leave it. They're so annoying. Does it turn you into the 16-year-old version of yourself? Yes, that I'm just an wants asshole. To rage? Me too. And I hate it. You know what I did when my mom said that about my nice. tan? Like 10 <laughs> minutes later, I was like, Mom, come over here. I like, pulled her into the bathroom, and I like lifted up my shirt to show her the tan line I had gotten because <laughs> I had to prove her wrong. And then I immediately felt ashamed of myself. Mm. Like, I have to let these things go. I know. Yeah. It's so hard, though. I know. She At the end of that conversation, she was like, this is, I can't believe I'm saying this, but she was like, I'm so sad that um, – I'm not even sad. Sad wasn't the word. I don't know what the word was. But she was like, I just – I regret that I won't be alive to see how you deal with your adult children. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, was like, wow. I was like, am I so horrible that you want me to watch me later experience this? There because... are so many levels to that. I know. Well, First of all, one, why she's did... not planning to be around. <laughs> right. Either she thinks she's going to meet an early demise or she thinks that you're going to be so – later into your life having children I think if, she thinks both of those things. yeah okay what do you think about those things um I think I'll have kids what late. is your birthing plan that's really my what birthing this podcast is about. <laughs> I've been when waiting to be to asked this them, how many do you want to have are we gonna do a doula I want are we one home birth hospital I want one in my late 30s okay and I hope that he or she has a, a minor speech impediment <laughs> Like I, what kind? Well, I want to tell you what I want. I want to name it the same name, boy or girl. I'll t- I can't tell you right now, but I'll tell you it. I want later. you to tell me, but I also I think you should never say them out loud. Well, I tell I tell it. people all the time. But, really? But, but but like friends who already have kids and are okay. That's safe. Know. Um yeah. But I want because of the R in the name and it's a really short name. I just like can't get over wanting my future child to have a speech impediment, just for a Is little it, while, and then I'll. Rory? No, I can't say okay. that myself. <laughs> I was Rory. Say, that's actually cruel. I can't say Rory. That sounds like. What if you. Oh my God, I've never thought about that. People who name their kids. That's tough. Rory. 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 It makes everyone and feel they don't like even they have a know. speech impediment. Yeah. By the way, not that there's anything wrong with having a speech impediment. No, I mean, I'm we all aiming speak for differently. it. <laughs> yeah, you're gunning for it. If I have a gay child with a speech impediment, I'll be winning. This first. <laughs> I'm really. Is that okay to say? I hope I that your know. mom's around God. to see that. I have to say. Me too. I hope she's wrong to see you fighting with that my child. adult child. Yeah, um, Christina, welcome to Soul Sisters. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's the best intro we've ever had to the show. Um, you and I are old email buddies. Yeah, we've been exchanging little notes back and forth over the internet. That's right. Yeah. What did you tweet? How did this start? You've got my email. I don't remember. I, I, I should have looked this up before we started. at you. Yeah. I don't tweet at anyone, though, so that's a funny thing for me to do. But, you know, that's how yeah. my co-host, who couldn't be here today, Dara, that's how she and I met, was on Twitter. on Twitter. That's the only other Twitter friend I have. 
So it's good that you're not both here because that would have been awkward to have this conversation (laughs) in front of her. Yeah, I feel pretty jealous of her. No, you replaced her now. It's it's official. Um, She's not here. This is what happens when she misses a day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I embarrassingly kept calling you Francis in the emails that I kept sending you. That's not embarrassing. My email is hot. It has from Francis Cole. Yes. Like, I'm generally capable of understanding that someone's name is not necessarily the same as their band name. Yeah, Even though yours, like, lends itself to confusion along those lines. Yeah. But also, yes, the email said Francis Cohn yeah. in my inbox. I don't blame anyone for that. I'm shocked if someone calls me Christina. Yeah. I think, wow, that's a researcher. <laughs> okay, well, here what we are. What is this person, a, a scientist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's – I'm going to listen to me saying that later and think, oh, she thinks she's being funny. <laughs> you are being funny. But I don't I don't, don't I think I'm going to hate it. No, no, no. I'm, Don't judge your own level of comedy while we're recording this podcast. This is Hold it until later. Okay. If I laugh, it's funny because I'm a bad fake laugher. But I'll be like, oh, she's full of herself. She's saying that because she thinks it'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. This is a, should we talk about this? <laughs> what, what is this insecurity? Um, I think it's because my brother is really good at interviews. Okay. And, and I, I don't think I'm as good at them, and so I get in my head. Yeah. I think this is fascinating that performers can feel awkward about public speaking. I know in my head that they're different things, mm-hmm. but it but to me who doesn't enjoy or is not great at doing either, I feel like if you can do one, you you're probably better at the other than you think. Like this is this is okay. Okay. I've done some um videos. I think I'm holding the mic really weird. Um <laughs> You know when, no, like, really everybody was level. doing a pledge music thing uh-huh. like that? I mean, they're still great. That's still a great company. People still do them. But we did one once, and there were, like, ten people around. and um, Or maybe more. And they were filming, and it was like, we were trying to make it really professional because they told us to. And, and he was like, okay, go. And I was like, I like, literally couldn't say a word. Like, I couldn't make myself talk. I couldn't be like, hi, we're Francis Cohn. Welcome yeah. to our pledge music. We're trying to make an album. Like, whatever. I, could, I, could, I couldn't do anything. Do you ha- has that been a lifelong problem of, what is that, stage fright? What is that? I don't know. Do you get stage fright with singing? I eat, I eat a banana, and it makes me not so nervous. Really? <laughs> Wait, is this like a known trick? Well, I did it because... <laughs> When I get nervous, I swallow a lot. Okay. And um, I thought, oh, I should swallow something besides air because then oh. if I just swallow air, then I burp the whole show. Right. And so, like, I'm doing it right now, but it doesn't matter. I feel like I'm going to burp now here. You talk about it. Again. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's Can't really bad to get in any slightly <laughs> compulsive person's brain that this is a thing that you could possibly do for yeah, your body yeah, yeah. when you're nervous. Yeah. It's bad. Anyway. So I write like triggering all of my personal anxieties. I know. I'm so sorry. It's okay. But where where are the bananas? It's okay. Huh? We can go get you some bananas. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) See, mine is like a shallow breathing thing. Like I'll start doing shallower breathing, and then I'll realize I'm doing it, and then I constrict even more. So then it gets even shallower. And the only trick for me to get out of that is to walk, because it makes my body Mm. take my breathing back over. Oh, that's nice. I can't do that right now, so. You figured it out, though. Just work through it together. Yeah, we'll be okay. I'll swallow. (laughs) You'll be like, (laughs) those are funny, (laughs) funny sounds. Yeah, what's the name of that disorder for people who are, like, really triggered by certain sounds? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but especially. Yeah, that. Those sounds. And people get, like, my ex-boyfriend has it. Really? Yeah. Is that weird? But is it that, okay, now, tell me if I'm misremembering it. But is it that it turns people on or they're disgusted mm-hmm. by it? It turns them on. I think that it's a combo of both, maybe. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. It just really gets them. So we might be triggering people right now <laughs> who have it for swallowing I'm and shallow breathing. I'm going to stop doing it. I just heard it. I'm going to stop doing it. All right. Oh. Let's change subjects. Okay. Let's Wait, did I say anything of- I need to com- explain? Oh. Like, I really, I really love my mom. Stage fright. Uh-huh. Oh, you, okay, you want to go all the way back? <laughs> no. This is going to be like I love concentric my mom. circles of a conversation. Um, yeah, we love our mothers. Yeah. We can criticize them and love them at the same time. Yeah, it's okay. Lord knows they do that about us. So. Yeah, she definitely loves me. Yeah. And so, definitely criticizes So much <laughs> <laughs> that she cannot sit idly by. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> While I ruin my life. Uh, are you um, ruining your life? 
No, I know. I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. I think I'll, I'll be okay. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my brother's good at interviews. That's oh, where right. we were. And then, and then we were at Sage, right? Yes, which you don't have except for the swallowing thing. Except for the swallowing and then a banana is okay. And, and, and then you're okay. good to go. Yeah. Okay. Banana and like if I'm really going for it. Not if I'm really going for it. Who am I? That's a lie. Oh, I have like two glasses of wine. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Original rock and roller here. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then I take my white wine to the stage and I set it down. And then I never touch it again. Really? During the show. It's weird. I don't know why I take it there. But it makes you feel better to have it there. Like if I if something bad happens, I'll just chug it down. Yeah. I don't know. Get that edge off real <laughs> yeah. quick. Except it doesn't work that fast. No, it's wine. It's white wine. Like five minutes later, you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. relaxed now. <laughs> At the end, like when I'm off stage. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, let's talk about music stuff. Mm. You have a new single out today? Is that right? We do. That's cool. It's really pretty. I like it. Thanks. Congrats. It's nice. You let NPR premiere it, so I'm like a little bitter about that. Because I, I got to premiere your last one. I know. That was fun. But then, like, what do I do now? What do you mean? After Billboard and NPR? Yeah. You peaked? Maybe. Should I quit? Yeah. Mic's up. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> um, Wait, I want to talk I about this new like, single, though. Unraveling. Like, Pitchfork would never like me, so there's really nowhere else to go. And and where else would you want I'm too, to go? Like, I, I'm too, like, Pitchfork is, I'm too nice. And, too nice. Oh. You know what I mean? They like, like, edgy stuff and people. Yeah. There is definitely an earnestness to your music. That they Not in a bad way. Like, I, I feel like I'm very sensitive to overly earnest stuff. Me too. Yeah. But yours is just, I'm like, on the relatable line. <laughs> earnestness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely on the line. A straddle. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of emotions in your music. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, like, little things that would send it over the edge that I had to control. Yeah? Like what? Lyrically? <sighs> it used to be acoustic guitar. <laughs> I was like, that's never going to. Yeah, okay. So, but there's a little bit of acoustic in our new song. That's true. Um, your sound has definitely evolved. Like, yes. from the first album. Even from the first album to the EP, I mm-hmm. can hear it. I feel like the EP was almost closer to what you are now. Mm-hmm. And that was only... Well, I don't know what the difference was in time between when you recorded those two things. They only came out a year apart, right? Yeah, I think it was about a year. Yeah. So what changed... To make that sound, make that jump. Well, I think the first, <laughs> I think the first album was just me trying my fucking best. Yeah, <laughs> I was just like, I can write some songs. I don't, I don't know what to do with them. Uh-huh. Um, and I saw Lucius when it was just the girls mm. and Danny Millard at the cake shop. Okay, and the I mean they were like not they were like a semblance of Lucius, but they were, like, I think they both had on, like, winter beanies, and, like, Danny was standing up playing drums, so it's just the three of them, and I looked at Danny, and I was like, if that guy makes songs with other people, then I hope that it's me. <laughs> so I emailed him, and um, he was like, yeah, I produce records, and so then I would just take him, like, mostly finished songs, but, like, Whoa. skeleton songs, and... We would we made that whole thing together. I'm really proud That's of it. That's amazing. Yeah. He agreed to do it on the basis of what? Like, I have no idea. You guys just like vibe. <laughs> maybe something? he didn't. Maybe he was broke. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't Actually, think it was, it was more funny. than that. <laughs> I think I got him to see me live because I hadn't. Okay. Didn't have anything recorded, so I got him to come to a show. So you were just like, like okay. a New York artist, like gigging around out in the could. wild. Yeah. Trying to like were you get Brooklyn? Rockwood to email me back. Um, Where were you living? Brooklyn. What kind of New York artist were you? Okay, Brooklyn. Williamsburg, but like the Montrose stop. <laughs> um, Do you want to explain when, to people listening who aren't from here oh, why you felt like you needed to say the Montrose because stop? Because Bedford, <laughs> for the, I mean, I've lived here for 11 years, but okay. Bedford, even 11 years ago, was like, I like, what an asshole. I would feel like if yeah. I moved here and I like, because it's too fancy. It is very fancy. Um, the mantra stop when I moved there 11 years ago had one coffee shop called the Cyber Cafe, and it didn't have the internet. Oh, and there you go. it was painted purple, and I was the only one who ever went there just on hopes that that day they might have it. 
<laughs> the look on Kate's face. Kate, who is still in college, by the way, when you said <laughs> didn't have internet, was like she had never heard that phrase before. Your face just contorted. No, it's like, it was like amazing. A cyber cafe is supposed to have internet. Yeah. And then this oh, one that's doesn't the fa- have okay. internet. Like, yeah. that's what blew my mind. And there, I didn't have a smartphone. I had a flip phone and a huge laptop that was way too heavy to carry around. Uh huh. Yeah. And I went, do you know, do you remember that bar on, do you, where do you live? I live in Bushwick. Oh. Do you know the bar on Bedford that used to have two for one yinglings and the internet? And it's not there anymore. It's like definitely not there anymore. I don't even know I don't what it's called. I don't know. But I would go in there even though I don't really like yingling and I would have two <laughs> and look for apartments. That's by what myself. we did in those early days in Brooklyn. Yeah. You go to where those drink specials are. Yep. And you lug all your heavy technology around. <laughs> and you think, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> My where, mom was right. <laughs> yeah, wait, where where did you grow up? In South Carolina. Oh, okay. So you came from there to here? Mm -hmm. No stops in between? No stops. Did you come for school or? Came right after school. Right after school. To make it as a musician. God, I don't even know. I mean, I don't think I thought about it. I think it was like after middle school, you go to high school and then you go to college and then Then you you go to New York. York. I don't know why. I mean, that's what I did too. I'm from Ohio and it was the same. Yeah. So you just kind of always wanted to go to New York. I guess. Had you I got been? here and I was like, I what's happening? Why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> Had you come when you were a kid to visit? We came for my brother's um, graduation from high school, and then we came again for mine. Okay. Like a family trip to celebrate the kind family of thing? family trip. And we did. We saw five Broadway shows both times. Whoa. And they were both, uh, I mean, all of them were because we sat in line at six in the morning for, the t- for those the cheap tickets. tickets. Yeah. And then we saw a bunch of shows and sat on the front row where you, you know how they're like right up front. You like can't really see. Yeah. I have too much anxiety to sit in that front row because mm. I'm like, what if I have a coughing fit? I will ruin the show. I'll stop it. I always and think I'll say me. something. It's like a weird fear of Tourette's that I don't have. I think I'll be like, like you'll respond. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I have been to the theater with people who will react vocally to something that happens on stage. Like, oh, my God. Or like, I can't believe it. And I'm like, you know, this is not real, right? <laughs> like, you can't believe it. It's a story that someone wrote yeah. that they're acting out on stage. Yeah. <laughs> you can believe like, it. <laughs> anything could happen. Someone wrote it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, so you knew the city from that tourist point of view. Yes. Yes. Like all the town. bright lights, mm-hmm. big city kind of stuff. And then you showed up. Did you know anybody? Like, were you crashing with anybody when you moved here? I stayed with my friend Liz, whose roommate had a padlock on her bedroom door where the internet was <laughs> wait what she like had a big um desktop uh-huh. i guess this sounds like it was like 1983 <laughs> but she had like a lock on her door and no one was allowed to use the internet so i had to go out into the world and we were it was her computer Pace. yeah i remember those days yeah 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 i Tough think times. i moved to new york with a laptop that couldn't get internet like, sometimes mm. your computers just got old yeah. and they couldn't do they it anymore. They stopped doing it. Yeah. So we'd all have to use, like, the one roommate's computer yeah. that could do it. Yeah. Okay, so you're in Washington Heights. We're really old. We're old, guys. <laughs> um, we were in Washington Heights, and there wasn't, like, I didn't have anywhere to go around there, so I just ended up in Williamsburg one day. I went to that restaurant, C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, the Thai place? I'll live here. Yeah. <laughs> this seems fine. Wait, that's so fu- I remember when I first moved to Brooklyn, I lived in Park Slope. And I had some friends that lived in Williamsburg. And when we went to visit them, we would only ever go to C because they said, I don't even, I don't know if it's true, but they said it was the restaurant that was in Garden State. Yes. That's why I went there first, too. So it was like the only thing that was cool in Williamsburg because, because it Garden was still like State. industrial and weird then, but it was like, oh, the Garden State restaurant. Okay. Oh, I went there so during funny. the day and it was like really beautiful and earthy and there's like a fountain in the middle. And yeah. then my parents came to visit and I took them for dinner thinking that's what it was at night. No. It is like at night. It's like mm-ts, mm-ts, yeah, yeah, it's a scene, mm-ts, mm-ts. <laughs> and like tight dresses and loud music. And my parents were like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. They don't talk like that. <laughs> they are very southern, but do they have accents? Oh, I don't. I can't hear them, but they apparently they have really strong accents. Did you have one? I have one sometimes. Okay. Still. Did you intentionally lose it? No. No. It, it just got lost. <laughs> it just got lost after living here for a while. Yeah. I mean, I think I could, like, when my, my brother doesn't have one either, when we get together, we like to have them for fun. Okay. But 
otherwise, no. What about when you're drunk? When I'm drunk, I have fun. Yeah. Or there are certain words that I can't correctly say. Like, can you think of one? I'm trying to think of, like, drawer. Is that one of those weird? I still say, like, cut the light out and oh, put like it up idioms. for, like, a way. Yeah. I taught a bunch of little kids to play the piano in Brooklyn, and it took them years to tell me they didn't know what I meant when I said put it up. That's so cute. They were like, you know, it's, we don't actually put it up, right? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, I can't believe you just told me that. Wait, so you were teaching while you were Mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. Are you still teaching? I'm not. um, What's the day job status? I don't know. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I mean, it's terrifying. When were you able to stop with that? In June. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Congrats. (laughs) That's I feel like I'll probably have to get another one. <laughs> no, you, I don't. Wait, think had you stopped at any point and then resumed? I mean, every time we went on tour, I stopped. Yeah, okay, okay. Like I would stop during the summers. So, so and my day job teaching... was like from like two to four. So okay. it's not like I like went to an office. My day job was very manageable. It was as a music teacher, like at my house. Oh, that's I made awesome. up a class for these little girls. There are seven little girls that came to my house on Mondays. Um, How old? Eight to ten. Okay. But they started, like, like, a long time ago, so they were, like, five when they started. Okay. Um, and I would teach them a song, like, like for instance, I would teach them Jolene. And then we talked about how women see women and competition, and eight to ten-year-olds have a lot of good stuff to say oh, about yeah. competition and what they think an ideal woman is. And, Whoa. Um, so then they would go and do art and while they did art which was always like topical like they would like draw Jolene or you know or paint her or whatever and then I would teach little tiny piano lessons to the other kids while they did their art it that's was amazing two and a half hours and I <laughs> love it what lessons did you learn from them like talking about mm-hmm. how they see women just that it starts so young uh, I mean I knew that like I remember feeling competitive in the second grade with Mm-hmm. This little girl, Cecilia. I was like, oh, she's so pretty. I want to be like her. <laughs> Were you guys friends? You and Cecilia? Um, no, I became friends with her best friend. I don't know. That's okay. weird. <laughs> um, Elementary school politics. Kids, kids are weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, so would you try to correct what what you were hearing back yes. from these girls? I did a lot of trying to correct in the moment in front of a group. Yeah. Like we all need to have each other's backs kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I they, mean, that was like my main thing. they received that information? Like, they could I think process so. that? Yeah. That's amazing. I think so. We did, like, we would, like, stand in a circle at the end, and you'd say something kind to the person to your right. Uh-huh. <laughs> in the last, very last class, I was like, okay, let's, like, say something kind about the person to our right, and then, I can't remember, this is not interesting at all, um, and then tell her um, one piece of encouragement. And so then it started out, like, normal and then it got to the fourth little girl and she was like okay so blah 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 is really pretty and funny and then if I have any advice for her I would say and I, was, I know she goes if I have any constructive criticism and I was like no 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 that's not what wow. we're doing here um sorry I didn't have that in the butt anyway <laughs> I mean you're basically working against what the rest of society is telling them so yeah that's no small job for one person yeah I tried yeah. Well, let's talk about your Southern feminism. <laughs> Does that come from your mom? No. No? <laughs> um, they'll never listen to this. Um, no, I'm a Southern Baptist preacher's daughter. Wow. Go um, on. And so I think that was partly why I really like the class, though, because I feel so strongly about a lot of the things that I learned, but oh, sans Jesus. But I like, like, we were taught yeah. to be so kind and all those things, and mm-hmm. and I like like weekly rituals still and like I I really love it and we didn't have like a it wasn't a negative experience yeah like um I don't believe it anymore and I and I feel sad when people do (laughs) so mean but like I I you mean I don't like know. people who are like strict to biblical stories, like that kind just of the, stuff? like the one hundred percent. This is right, absolutely the truth. And, yeah, 
But then on the other hand, like I'm, I want my 70 one year old mother to believe in heaven because it gives her a lot of hope. And so I don't want to argue that with her. Right. But I also like personally can't believe it. Like I want to, that sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. I want to like go live somewhere awesome forever. It also sounds really overwhelming to live forever, but, um, (laughs) I know, you know, it's so, it's such a nice idea and I I want to have that for her. So that's the one thing like we definitely don't ever, I mean, we can argue religion and choices and stuff, but I'm never like, mom, you know, heaven is fucking made up. (laughs) Right. Well, that's my thing about it. It's like anything that sounds so perfect, then it's like, well, of course, that's what we all want to believe. Yeah. But like, it's probably too good to be true. So comforting. I I mean, maybe there's somewhere. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But that's my final answer on everything religion. Yeah, me too. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Who knows? I'm definitely not an atheist, but I definitely don't think that we know. Right. And, and I want, I don't know, I'm, I'm currently having such a hard time with, um, that culture because it, um, seems so opposite politically, um, than what, like, I believe Jesus and who that guy was in the Bible. And like, so if you're into that guy, then like, you better get your ass out on the streets and march for social justice and black lives matter and all the things you know right. and so that that like you must feel like that religion the parts of, of the religion that you enjoy is being hijacked yeah it's being hijacked right by the political right yeah yeah and by fox news like yeah and it's such a cancer fox news is such a cancer so i wanted to ask you i i kind of had a feeling about your politics because your Twitter feed makes it pretty clear. I'm assuming that I don't think I have any ideas, so I just retweet. retweet, retweet. I'm assuming no. I'm the same. I'm the same. I mostly retweet. Yeah. I'm like, well, everyone else is saying it better than so me. So much better. Like, yeah. who, that's not my talent. My right. brother has a good one. I'm like in love with my brother on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're answered everything. I'm well, terrible at it. My brother is perfect he's at really it. Good at it. He makes movies and he makes really good movies about how we grew up, and they're also Wait, very really? loving. Yeah. What, what kind um, of movies? I mean, what do you mean? Like, it, like narrative film? Mm-hmm. What is, oh. Is he He's a in, writer, director? Mm-hmm. Has um, he made anything that we might have seen or heard or, um, or where would we find them? His most popular one, I think, I don't know what he would say. He talked about Henry Gamble's birthday party in the New York Times last year. And that was, um, so I think maybe that's the most popular one. Okay. And it, they're at good film festivals and stuff. And then he has a new one called princess sid i should be his publicist yeah you should um, tell us about it and it's gonna be in the london film festival in like a month or so that's amazing big deal. yeah and it's cool. a really great movie and then they're all like very loving um but um they're loving but they're critical lovingly critical movies of our childhood wow so all centered on a family um centered around religious people got it okay so sounds like your brother's working things out in his art do you feel like you're doing that in your songwriting Mm. like stuff specifically born out of your experience growing up in your family i think like some of your songs yeah could be read as a little autobiographical or themes anyway yeah they're also there, I feel like I'm really bad at talking about my music. Yeah, as a which is whole. fine. And you like, can it's like not you were like, there's one song. Like, okay, well, let me ask you about not you. Per, like, you're doing a great I'm job. I'm gonna accept this challenge. <laughs> no, no, no. I could be better. <laughs> okay. Leave without you. You said it was about the possibility of leaving New York when I yeah. talked to you about it. Yeah. You didn't leave New York. Well, sort of. Like, Our band is currently packed. Isn't that crazy? Packed. Like we're... about to move. Yeah. We moved. You sort did. Of. This is so funny because when was that? When did that song come out? Like in March. And yeah. And you were like, "We haven't decided. I don't want to say that it's that we left New York, but we don't know what's going on." We did it. You did it. We were sort of. So we were going on tour for a month. Uh huh. It was a great tour. It was like can't turn it down. <laughs> like one of the first tours that I didn't have to plan myself. <laughs> Amazing. Um, <laughs> and I was gonna have. This is this is boring. Basically, our landlord like raised our rent to like thirty four hundred dollars a month. So we were like, we can't live in Who's New York we? and tour. My boyfriend and I, Andy, who is the guitar slash bass player in the band, 
Got it. Okay. He's very nice. Is he? Yeah. Nicer like than your him. brother. Sorry, that's gross. That's a weird question. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Well, that's a whole other thing we could get into. Um, oh. I mean, no. I was just. It's so fun. I was. I was with Andy for so long. We were together twenty four seven. We're in this band. Uh-huh. We travel. We live together. All the stuff. Um, and then I left like a week ago i haven't this isn't a thought i've really thought through so it might come yes we're working it out here we're working it out i left like a week ago and it was like ooh, i don't you know when you're with someone so much you have to rediscover your personality yeah and and but i didn't really have to because i went right home and i was with my brother okay who is the only other person that i behave like i'm like so silly and you know just like total 100 percent comfort in somebody that gets you and like believes the same things as you and uh-huh. treats people or you has like the same goals to treat people the way you want to treat people, you know. So like yeah. I'm so comfortable. So I didn't have to make the transition, but he did. He when I, when I saw him again a week later, he was like, "Yeah, I had like kind of a hard time." I was like, "It's like I had to like re-figure out who I was for a second, which is yeah, a funny thing to do." Does that did that make you want to approach your relationship a little differently? Were you like, "Oh, that's I should probably keep." Keep sense of moving. myself. Yeah. Well, I don't throughout. think it's a total sense of a loss of yourself. I think it's like you just move through the world more comfortably. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Oof. That makes sense. So you guys were living together. Do, do I sound like a 1950s housewife who has no identity? No. That's real. I don't think that that is what I mean. No, that's not what that's not what you mean. I mean, look, a lot of it is just like it's just I think it's more about like habit and behavior and mm-hmm. it's not identity, but it's just like the way that you're used Yeah, because there is a difference between moving through the world where you're the only person that you have to worry about. Yeah. And everything you're doing is for yourself. You're yeah. going to this movie for you, you're going out to dinner with these people cuz they're your friends or whatever. Yeah. When that's not your life because you're in a serious relationship with someone that you live with, your life looks different than looks that. different. Yeah. And so your behaviors are going to be shaped around that. I mean, that's just yeah. how it works. Yes. <laughs> that's how human beings work. And we do that as a band, too. Like, yeah. it's not just the two of us. Like, we'll, like, if we have a really far distance to drive, mm-hmm. after, like, two days, we'll get out and, like, have to talk to the band we're opening for or talk to the people at the venue, and we're just all, like... Yeah, <laughs> I got nothing. Like all, all of our inside jokes that we think are funny to everyone else, we're like, "Oh no, shit!" Like I went through this thing on tour where I would look in the mirror and just be like, oh, "I'm so pretty today," which is like <laughs> definitely not a thing I was thinking. It was because I looked so horrible. Then I would just be like, "Oh, I'm so pretty," and I would be like, oh, "Yeah, Christine, you're so pretty, so pretty today." <laughs> and then I like got to a venue once, and I was like. Guys, I'm so pretty today. I was like, oh no, they think it's real. Did you correct? Did well, you I tried. I think I might I think I might have let it ride. I don't really remember. <laughs> I just remember thinking, like, God, they were just such an asshole. We should all say that about ourselves. Yeah, and then I thought that is a nice thing to say to yourself. It is. <laughs> In the car mirror that yeah. shows like this much of your face. I think it's like they say if you like if you make yourself smile, you'll feel happier. I mean, it's like if you tell yourself you look pretty, you'll feel pretty. While smiling, don't while smi- me. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Trick your brain. You feel happy and pretty. Um, okay, I think we have to wrap up soon, which is no. sad. Because I want to do this for a long time. <sighs> me too. So I need to make sure we talk about things we need to talk about, which is like when the hell is your album coming out? Because oh, all these like, songs. Where are you from? Uh, me? Stuff like that. <laughs> nah. That's, very that's when we have that drink that we said. Yeah. We were going to have for the last Oh, year. Ohio. You said that already. Yeah, Ohio, good. and then you came here. Yeah. Okay. When's your album coming out? Don't dodge the question. Well, I'd like to further dodge it. Okay. No. Is it um, still inside of this year? I think so. I hope so. So okay. what happened was we recorded all this music in Nashville, and uh-huh. then – um, we put, wait, where did you move to? We're, we, uh, we haven't been there yet. So we moved out of our apartment. We're moving to Nashville. Okay. You can, everyone's have a, moving to Nashville. Well, cause you can tour so easy from there. You can't live here and tour. We bought a tour van. Where, where will it go? Yeah. Are you from Nashville? No, I want to move to Nashville. Oh, you should. It's the, the place to the be. That I want to go to. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, go. Come on. 
I'll go with you guys. Also, yeah, we have it's a 15 passenger van, so bring perfect. 14 <laughs> of your closest friends. Let's go. <laughs> no, just kidding. It has our sofa in it, but we do have Wait, three seats. Christina, when are we gonna hang out? Oh my god, this is stressful. When are you well, moving? You're already gone, basically. At, on That's Sunday. That's what your eyes are telling me. On, we, so we have a <laughs> sofa in our van and, like, clothes for a few months because we're going to go and live in a funny little apartment where there's a pool because I think that sounds fun. In Nashville? Mm-hmm, while we look for a house. Are you leaving from the Hot 100 Festival? Yes. Did you just say you're leaving on Sunday? <laughs> we're leaving right after we play and we're driving through wow. the night because we want to see the eclipse. <laughs> oh, my God. Because it goes through Nashville. That's amazing. So right, Andy's going to take an Adderall, and I'm going to sleep. Yeah, good plan. Because that was – I don't care about it that much. Honestly, I think it sounds like a scary movie. But the Eclipse? Yeah, it doesn't sound scary. Plus, you have to have those special glasses. Like, yeah. no one's going to be prepared to actually look at this thing. No, everyone's going to be blind on August 22nd. Yeah. Like, ophthalmologists are going to have a big field day the day yeah. after that. I hope they're uh, clearing their schedules. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really fix blindness, but I don't know. Or maybe, maybe we can. The um, government probably knows how at this point. Yeah, probably, but they aren't going to tell They're not telling anyone. us. <laughs> <laughs> Your album. It might oh. come out this year. Okay, You're so going to be back in Nashville where you make all the magic happen. So, yeah. So, signs are pointing to. So, we put. Arizona out and then it just did really well it and did. we didn't know what to do we were like oh well maybe someone else will want to put the album out and we won't do it by ourselves oh yeah and so that's a really long process it turns out yeah but I think it's almost done okay I don't know who knows yeah knock on Formica <laughs> literally no wood in this rug. room <laughs> um, paper paper probably works I got you okay Books. um I don't know. It feels like it might work out soon. Okay. We did a tiny desk. Oh, yeah. I saw a picture of that. <gasps> yeah. It's not nice. I hope that we did good. We haven't seen it. But um, um, you my, guys are awesome live. I'm sure it was amazing. I think it felt like um, jumping, diving off a diving board. I don't remember really? any of it. I was just like. Are you blacked out? I could see Bob Boylan and look to the corner of my eye with a hat awesome. on and a yellow shirt and he hung out with us all day he like came downstairs we thought we were gonna he was just gonna send down like a rolly cart with an intern or something yeah nope but he showed up himself pushed all our stuff around loaded up the car with that's us that's amazing he's so nice that's great it was, it was really fun um anyway i think that i think that someone else will release it okay does it have the same title you're yeah, on. because it just like becomes more relevant. Late riser. Yeah, it's like the later and later it gets. <laughs> That's so true. It's like as soon the- it's gonna be like a zombie <laughs> is the yeah. cover art. <laughs> like, I was like rising after you're dead. Yeah, yeah. The clock's just ticking away. Perfect. Well, I mean, you keep putting out these amazing singles, and with That's streaming, nice. it's like I want an album because I want more music. But in the meantime, it's not like I don't have. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Could you guys hear that? She whispered it, but we're going to turn the audio up so you definitely hear that. Um, all right. I love, I well, love this tea. I mean. Good job, Kate. Yay. Um, I hope you enjoy your move to Nashville. I hope you have fun down there. Thanks. If you get real religious, um, Cece Winans was on this podcast telling us about her church that she leads down there with her husband. You know, the gospel singer from the Winans yeah. family. Yeah. Oh, I know Cece Winans. <laughs> Our new drummer, we have new drummer Aaron Hamill. He's uh-huh. so wonderful, and he grew up like me. So we, I've never had anyone in the band like that. Okay. So we just can nerd out about um like Christian Gospel? contemporary. Yeah, like yeah. there's this guy named Carmen. I don't know if any of you grew up like this. You did not. Um, <laughs> who was like basically like a performance artist who played a grand piano and sang Christian songs and. Just, like, out of the blue on tour last time, Aaron was like, do you remember Carmen? And I was like, oh, my God, I don't know. <laughs> thought about Carmen in so long. Anyway, I know yeah. CC Wine is. I really want to check out her church. I love – I I mean, I still sometimes will go and be like, oh, either this is why I don't go anymore or yeah, right. <laughs> I miss it so much. I feel so much kinder when I leave. But I feel yeah. that kind when I leave yoga, too. Oh, there you go. So. If you don't want your Jesus on a given morning, you can always yeah. go for – a little downward dog. I really want a very liberal church, but they're really hard to find. They are. Because there's the I whole sin part. I think you can find part. one in Nashville now. Maybe. It's people like you were moving here, there, though. so. Yeah, I know. It's true. And it's New York. Yeah. Because we just, it's like all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's either Jesus died for your sins and then he was brought back to life. 
and believe and I and there's like the guilt part I just can't can't do it yeah but I'm into like let's treat each other so kindly and all of that so nice we need that right now yeah what do you what are you doing to keep your soul okay I don't I guess I'm trying to ask like what's your self-care these days with all this mm. crazy shit that's happening in our country do you ever listen to On Being with no. Krista Tippett? Oh, the, yeah. The podcast? Mm-hmm. That really helps me out. Kind of feels like church. Yeah. Um, okay. Christina's going to end our podcast by plugging another podcast, so I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I no, get my... That's I a good do, one. I do get my anger out also with Pot Save America. Do yeah. you listen to that one? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, those boys. Yeah, those are great. I mean, I think that's what... It, it is very cathartic just to hear other people talking about it and to be yeah. like, yeah, that's how I feel. But you're saying yeah. it more eloquently yeah. than me. You're it's like, like retweet thing. slightly more informed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, or exponentially more informed depending yeah. on who you're listening to. But yeah. And then like the next time you try to have that conversation with somebody, you're going to like poorly paraphrase them, but still yeah. feel a little bit smarter yeah. for it. Yeah. You're like my most clever friend at a bar and I don't have to talk back. Exactly. Yeah. It's nice. Maybe people feel like that after listening to you on this podcast. Oh, I don't think that they will. I don't know. <laughs> Let's read the comments. Guys, let us know what you thought. <laughs> that's nice. Do you think I said it? I've said that's nice a lot. My friend Sarah says she's British. She's always like, oh, that's nice. So now I have I say it, but it doesn't sound quite. You got to say it with your oh, that's South Carolina That's accent. nice. <laughs> yes. That was horrible. Um, that sounded nice to me. Okay. All right. You that's... feel okay about this? Do you? I feel great about it. Okay. Time flew. I think that's the best sign. Okay, I'm only a little bit wondering if I sounded like my identity is too wrapped up in my boyfriend. I think we clarified that. We did. Yeah, we clarified it. I think I clarified it for you. Yeah. So now your identity is wrapped up in me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm proud of that. I'm, I feel good about that. I feel good about okay. it, too. We, I think we did good. I did, too. I had a nice time. Yeah, girl. It's nice to see your face. You, too. All right. Thank you. Thank you.